Hello, welcome to Baby's Go Jump tutorial. I am Baby, your instructor. I have been playing the jump for over 30 years and have taught hundreds of students. I am very excited to share my knowledge with you. Today, I'm going to give you a crash course on how to play this wonderful instrument. You will learn some very important basic skills. So let's get started. In this video, I will teach you the following lessons. And by the end of the video, you will be able to play basic improvisations on the Kujong and have some important tools to take with you for further studies. Feel free to pause any time in the video to practice. First, let's learn the Gujong part. This is called the head, which is a box that can be opened. Inside the box, there are individual tuning pins. This is the body, and that's the tail. On the body, there are three bridge sections. This one is called the mountain, which is the right long bridge. We also have 21 individual movable bridges, and that's the tail bridge. When we play, we mainly play the right section of the strings, the section between the mountain and the movable bridges. The section to the left of the movable bridges are mainly for bending and vibratos. Next, let's talk about tuning the kujang. There are two ways to tune the strings. Number one is to use the tuning range to change the tension of the string and to change the pitch. Trace the string and its tuning pin, insert the tuning wrench, push the tuning wrench forward to raise the pitch, and pull the tuning wrench backward to lower the pitch. Number two is to use the movable bridges. Move the bridge the left to lower the pitch. Move the bridge to the right to raise the pitch. Remember to use your right hand to lift the string up to release the tension and use your left hand to move the bridges. You will need a digital tuner or a tuning app for pitch reference. To start, we are going to tune the Gujong strings to the D pentatonic scale. D pentatonic scale consists of five notes. D, E, F sharp. repeats four times. So let's try to tune the strings. Now we have finished the tuning. Your guzheng should sound like this. Next, let's get familiar with the names of the strings. We can call the names as D, E, F sharp, A, B. We should also know the name as Do, Re, Mi, So, 
la. First, cut the finger tape to about 15 centimeters or 20 centimeters long. This is a pick for middle finger, index, or ring finger. They are identical. If your pick has um, a flat side and a curved side, you will use the flat side to tape against your finger. And the curved side is for plucking the strings. So first tape like this. This is the flat side. I will tape it slightly above the bottom of the pick. And then I wrap around one time. Then I'm going to use it for my middle finger. So I'm going to position the pig flat side down, hold the tip, put above the first knuckle, and use my thumb to hold the bottom of that pig while I wrap the tape around neatly in one line. Not too tight, just enough to hold the pick. After I finish, it looks like this. Very clean. And you do this for index finger and ring finger. Same thing for the left hand. And for the thumb, it's a little bit different. So let me cut the tape first. For the right hand thumb, we're gonna hold the fingertip of the pick like this. The top side pointing left. And I'm gonna apply the tape first slightly downward like that. Then I'm gonna put it back upward a little bit. Okay. Then I'm gonna hold the fingertip, apply it to the middle of my thumb tip my thumb above the first knuckle so the fingertip is tilting to the other side at a 30 degree angle. I can use my index finger to hold the bottom of the thumb while I wrap with another hand. Wrap neatly in one line. That's how it looks like when you finish. And for left hand, the fingertip will point. And for left hand, the fingertip need to point at 
the opposite direction, the right hand pick. So I want my fingertip to point to the right. I'm going to hold the fingertip and apply the tape first downward and slightly upward. Use my right hand to hold the pick, position it above my first knuckle in the middle of the thumb. Hold it with the index finger. See the pick is tilting to the right at a 30 degree angle. And I'm going to wrap it with my right hand, neatly in one line. And this is what the thumb looks like after finish. This is what should look like when you have the pick some. Now I have my finger pick some. I'm ready to play. Let's talk about sitting position and hand shape. When we sit, we want to use a flat stool and the height of the stool will make you to sit very comfortably like this. And I'm going to sit right to the right of the guzheng, like my shoulder will line up with the edge of the mountain. And I will leave about two fists of distance between my belly and the front frame. And I will align my belly button with the first bridge. And keep your back straight, shoulder relaxed. The basic hand shape should be very relaxed. It looks a little like you're holding an apple. Or you can see a C letter form from your index finger and your thumb. Like this. Now let's talk about how to position your wrist. Since the guzheng has a curved soundboard, it's important to adjust your wrist position depending where you play on the instrument. If you are playing at the lower pitched strings, you want to keep your wrist slightly up, like this. If you are playing at the middle range strings, you want to keep the wrist flat, like this. And if you are plucking higher range strings, you want to keep the wrist a little bit lower, like this. Many beginners find it difficult to keep the wrist either flat or slightly up during playing. So please pay close attention to your wrist when you play guzheng. And remember to adjust the wrist position when you move across the instrument. Next, I want to talk about playing area, where to pluck on a string. Since the right sections of the strings between the mountain and movable bridges are for plucking. Where should we pluck to get the best sound? So normally for right hand, we want to plug at a one eighth spot of that string close to the mountain. So if the string effective length is this, the one eighth spot is about right here. So this for this string. And for the lower pitch strings, since the string length is longer, we can move the hand a little bit away from the mountain. It's about right here. And for the higher pitch strings, since the string length is shorter, we want it to plug closer to the mountain. It's about right here. For beginners, if you find it difficult, to find spot, just remember one inch distance to the left of the mountain for right now. That's for right hand. And for left hand, we want to plug pretty much the middle of the string, except for the lower pitch strings, since the strings are very long, we want to plug right here, which basically is your shoulder width. You don't want to go wider than where your shoulder is. So let's just keep it right here for the lower strings. And once you come into the middle range, you can keep it in the middle 
of the string between the mountain and the movable bridges. It will look like this when I play with my both hands together. Next, I'm going to show you some basic plucking techniques. Let's make some sound. Let's first review the hand shape. Remember the apple and the C letter. Keep all the knuckles slightly curved. Let's start with this lowest green string, so. Land our middle finger on it. Use the tip of the middle finger and the pick and the string should have a 45 degree angle, not perpendicular. So it's important to open your elbow slightly. So there's about 45 degree angle underneath your armpit. Okay, land. Let's pluck the string by bending the first knuckle toward the center of your palm. Then release. Let's move to the next string. La. Other fingers should follow except for the thumb, should stay where it is. Let's try with the index finger. Land 45 degree, the pick and the string. Relax the whole time and wrist flat. Let's try with the thumb. Bend the first knuckle towards the center of your palm. Now keep the wrist flat. Don't move the wrist when you play with the thumb. Let's try with our ring finger. Let's play some lower range strings. Keep your wrist up. Pluck by bending the first knuckle towards the palm. Release. the string with the left hand. First, form a hand shape as you are holding an apple. Remember the C letter shape of index and thumb. Land your middle finger, the tip of the pick, on the lowest string. And pluck by bending the first knuckle towards your palm. Release. Change it to index finger. Change it to thumb. Now let's play a fingering combination of middle finger and the thumb. The middle finger and the thumb often placed notes that are an octave. For example, this so and the higher so. This la and the higher la. This do and the higher do. So to play, open 
the palm wider and land your middle finger on the lower sole flat while keep your thumb open and for index finger you want to keep it curved like this right flat release and land your thumb on the second sole the green string release let's repeat sound. I know it is not what we want, but for beginners, it's easier to pluck the string like this. So it's okay. If you want to eliminate that noise, when you're playing at a more advanced level, you can prepare for fingertip next to string, not on the string before you pluck it. Then you pluck directly without touching the string first and release. closer to each other comparing to middle finger and the thumb. For example, the saw and the la. I play saw with index finger. Then I play la with the thumb. I can also try play saw and the do. The so and the re. Then so and the mi. This one I can choose either use index finger and the thumb or middle finger and the thumb since it's wider now. Index and thumb or middle finger and the thumb. And then there it is octave. I want to use middle finger and the thumb for sure. So let's try one more time. Start with the so, index and the thumb. So, 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 so,
Let's try the combination with your left hand, starting with your index finger. Let's play so and thumb play la and so do so re so mi. Then switch to middle finger. So, repeat this pattern at any string. Now let's learn a more difficult fingering combination called four points technique. This technique consists of four notes played by three fingers, middle finger, thumb, index, and thumb. The first two notes are an octave played by middle finger and thumb. For example, so and the higher so. The next note is played by the index finger. I will be playing a note that is in between the middle finger and the thumb. Right now I'm going to play re. Then I will play the thumb again. So the four notes is so, so, re, so. La la mi la. Then goes to do, same pattern. Do do so do. To re 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 la re. Mi mi do mi. with your left hand at lower pitched strings starting from do We can use it to play different notes with different combinations. For example, Please experiment. Use the fingering to play different notes on the guzheng. Just remember to play the octave with your middle finger and the thumb. Play other two notes with your index finger and the thumb. A common application for the left hand four points technique is to provide accompaniment for the right hand melody. For example, la is the melody on the right hand. I will play la la mi la on the left hand. Now let's try this. Right hand plays a melody. Left hand plays the four points technique pattern. Change the notes with the right hand melody, like this.
beginners, you can switch less on the left hand. Just play the same notes over and over until you feel comfortable to move to the next group of four notes. Experiment and have fun. Now you know how to play single notes. Next, let's learn how to play multiple notes simultaneously to produce richer and fuller sounds and to provide harmony to the melody. Intervals are produced by two strings played at the same time. For example, Do and Mi. These two strings have one string in between them, and this is a very common type of interval called xiao cuo, small cuo. It's played by the index finger and the thumb, plug at the same time, and release. Remember to keep your thumb outside of the index finger. Release, and let's try la and the re. Let's try playing intervals with the two strings in between them. This is also a very common type of interval, xiao cuo, with the two strings between two notes. For example, so and re, la and mi, do and so, re and la, mi and do. Intervals with one string in between two notes and the two strings between two notes are the two most common type of small cuo, xiao cuo. Next, let's learn another type of common interval called octave. The technique name is called da cuo or big cuo. An octave is played by the middle finger and the thumb playing two notes at the same time. For example, so and the higher so. Land both fingers on the string. Keep your index finger curved. Bend the first knuckles towards the center of your palm and release. Remember not to close your second knuckle. Keep it open. Let's try another note, la. Do. Let's try with your left hand. Let me show you how to use intervals to make a melody more complex and interesting. For example, a melody like this. index finger and keep the thumb playing the same notes. I can also try adding my middle finger. Remember, the thumb always play the melody note. The index finger harmonize with the melody note. Now let me show you how to play chords. A chord consists of three or more notes played at the same time. Basically, you're adding one and more notes on top of an interval. For example, Do Mi is interval. Adding another lower Mi with the middle finger becomes a chord. Let's try Re, La, Re. So basically, it's an octave, right, right, adding the index finger in the middle. Oh, do, so, do. 
four is the octave do and do and in the index finger in the middle. It's important to remember you want to land all three fingers at the same time. So you can get used to the hand shape of that chord. Let's try ending one more finger, the ring finger. Play La with the ring finger, Do, middle finger, Mi, index, thumb, La. So it's basically you're playing an octave La and a La with the ring finger and the thumb, adding middle finger and index in between them. So La, Do, Mi, La. You can also try the same thing for the next chord, Do, Mi, So, Do. So interval Do, Do, which is the octave, adding two notes in the middle, Mi and So. I'll land all four fingers at the same time and plug. It's very important to able to form the shape. So that is some very slow practice in the beginning. So open your ring finger and then thumb, position your index and the thumb, middle. Land all four at the same time on the strings, then pluck. Let's practice playing chords with your left hand. First, let's try to play three notes chords. Do, so, do. Or we can play mi, so, do. Mi, so, do. Re, la, re. Land off three fingers at the same time. Or so, la, re. Mi, do, mi. La, do, mi. So, re, so. So, la mi la, re mi la, do so do, mi so do. Now let's add in the ring finger to play four notes chords. Re so la re, mi la do mi, so do re so. La, Do, Mi, La Do, Mi, So, Do Re, So, La, Re Mi, La, Do, Mi So, Do, Re, So La, Do, Mi, La Do, Mi, So, Do There are some common chords that you should know later But for right now Let's just practice any combinations of notes played together. Just remember the technique. Remember to land all fingers at the same time on the strings before you pluck the strings. Now let's try add some melody to the chords. experiment with any types of combinations playing the chords. But right now, just to remember, we need to get the technique right. Then you can worry about the notes. Now let's talk about left hand bending techniques. The left hand techniques, such as vibrato and bending, really gives the instrument its unique characteristics and sound. It makes the guzheng able to mimic human voice. Listen. Da 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 da.
Position your left hand about 15 to 20 centimeters to the left of the movable bridge. Use the index finger, middle finger, and the ring finger, the tip. Keep your wrist slightly up, add the two fingers slightly open, and the finger knuckles slightly curved like this. Right hand plucks the string. So after the right hand plucks the string, the left hand wrist moves down and then up repetitively in a controlled motion. So let's try to count. One, two, three, four, five, then back. Remember, just drop the wrist down and lift it up without changing the fingers. Keep the finger position stable. Then practice slowly before you can speed up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Try to get faster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's try another string. Always finish the vibrato with a lift the wrist. Lift and stay before you change string. index and the middle. Remember to keep your wrist straight. Do not open your arm. Uh, keep the arm naturally relaxed like this. So once you come to the lower range of strings, just keep two fingers on the string like this. It's very important to keep the speed and the force of each individual vibrato evenly and consistently. Do not speed up or slow down. And do not shake your arms and do not tighten your arm and your wrist. Another thing to remember is, after plucking a string, wait a little bit, then do the vibrato. Don't do vibrato at the same time when you pluck the string. Bending changes the pitch of the strings, so we can play notes outside of the pentatonic scale. Position the left hand index finger, middle finger, and the ring finger tip on a string. 
20 to 15 centimeters to the left of the bridge and keep the wrist slightly up. Push the string down while keeping the wrist up. You can put your thumb next to the index finger like this instead of open. Uh, just relax the thumb and index. Relax the thumb and the pinky. Try again. It's very important to keep the second knuckle bent outwardly and you can bend the first knuckle inwardly like this. So that's how you push the strings. Push, release, push and release, push and release. Let's bend the string so we can play the Fa note. The Fa note is played by bending the Mi string. So this is a Mi. Play Fa, bend it down a little bit and play. That's Fa. Control one more time. Mi, Fa. Now let's try to play the T note by bending the La string. This is a La. And T. One more time. La. T. In general, bending from Mi to Fa takes less force comparing to bending from La and T because from Mi to Fa, there is only a half step interval between the two notes. However, from the note La to T, this is a whole step interval. So we have to push more. Watch. Mi to Fa. Little bit bending. La to T, more bending. And for the thicker strings, it takes more strength and more force to push it down because there is more resistance. And for the thinner strings, it takes less force to bend. Let me show you how to play the diatonic scale. A diatonic scale consists of seven notes. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, It's difficult to control the timing of the release and bend, but it's very important so you can produce a very clean sound when you bend the string. So after you play the Mi string, you want to wait until the last moment before you bend down the string then play Fa. Now hold it, don't move, then play So, then release the string. Wait, bend, hold, don't move, then release. If you bend the string too late or too early, it will sound like this. Too early, too late. But that's not ideal. So practice. A very difficult part of our string bending is knowing how much to push down the string to produce the pitch we want for that note because there's no mark on the strings or on the guzheng to tell you how much to bend. So we really have to use our ears as our guide. We have to know the pitch of the note and able to hear it. It takes a lot of practice to build the muscle memory. So please be patient, practice, listen to the pitch, and try to remember the movement of the hand. Another type of bending is called slurs. There are two types of slurs upward slur and downward slur. 
an upper slur raises the pitch of a string. A downward slur lowers the pitch of that string. To play upper slur, we we'll plug the string first, then we push it down. And for downward slur, we push it down first, then play the string, then release. To play slurs, the hand shape and the finger positions are the same as playing vibrato. Remember to use the tip of a finger, not the space between the pick and the finger to press on the string. Now hold. Let me show you how much to push a string for upper slur. Generally, we want to push the string down until it reaches the next note in the pentatonic scale. For example, so do I need to reach re. If I play right upper slur, I need to reach mi. If I play mi upper slur, I need to reach so. If I play so, I need to reach la. If I play la, I need to reach do. Always the next note in the pentatonic scale. To play an upward slur on DO string, you plug the DO string, then push the string down so it reaches the note RE. Gradually push the string down. And you can hear the progress. RE, you push the string down so it goes to ME. After you pluck the string, wait a little bit before you start pushing down the string. So it goes to La, and La goes to Do, Do goes to Re, Re goes to Mi, Mi goes to So, So it goes to La. La goes to Do. And for thinner strings, the higher pitched ones, we want to position our left hand closer to the bridge. It's about 10 centimeters instead of 15 or 20 centimeters. For the thicker one, more away from the bridge. Now I will show you how to play downward slurs. A downward slur is played by pushing down the string first, plug it, and release gradually until it returns to normal. Push, plug, release gradually. Controlled so you can hear the progress of the release. For downward slurs, we need to push the string down until it reaches the pitch of the next higher note in the pentatonic scale. If we are doing a downward slur, do downward slur means you have to push the string first to reach re, then you play and release back to do. This is re, release. This is mi. Often, a upper slur and a downward slur is played one after another, like this. Do upper slur downward slur right up right down me up me down
Lá, a, lá, down. Remember to do the bending gradually, so you can hear the progress of the string being bent down and same for the release, gradually release the string. Wait a little bit before you start to bend. Hold a little bit before you start to release. I will show you one more type of bend. It's called quick bend. Bian an. Bian an or quick bend is played by quickly bounce the wrist after you pluck the string, like this. Quickly bounce the wrist. So this type of bend, you are not pushing the string down like this. You just bounce the wrist with force on the wrist, not on the fingertip. The an or quick bend can be played multiple times in a row like that. Now let's talk about a signature guzheng technique. It's called glissando or gliss. Glissando produces sounds like water, wave, and wind. There are two types of gliss, upward gliss or index finger gliss. And thumb gliss or downward gliss. referring to the scale, up the scale, from lower notes to higher notes, upward. Not directional. Downward means from higher pitch sound to lower pitch sound. You can use glissando to fill in space for a long note or as short connecting notes. We use a different technique to pluck the strings. Instead of pluck the string by bending the knuckle, like this, you will be pushing the fingertip onto the next string, like this, continuously. And when we play index finger glass, we need to keep the finger knuckle controlled curve the whole time. And you can open other fingers like this. And keep your wrist low. Do not raise your wrist or keep it flat. Keep it lower than your knuckles. Push and rest. And the end you want to pick up by bending your knuckle. Only for the last note. So let's try it again. Rest, push, and rest. And then bend your knuckle. The last note. Ah, uh, and try it faster. Okay, try the same thing with your left hand.
For thumb gullets, the technique is similar to index finger gullets, but we need to keep our wrist up higher than the palm, like this. Curve your first knuckle, open the palm and other fingers. Push forward and rest on the next string. Keep going like this. The end of the glass, bend your knuckle. Try one more time. Faster. Faster. Adjust my wrist position depending on where I'm at on the strings. Let's try the same thing for left hand. Pick it up by bend, first knuckle. Control your first knuckle, keep it curved. That is a difficult part for many beginners is to keep the first knuckle controlled and curved the whole time while you play the glass. Glasses are often played by one hand after another rotating like this. In order to play two hand glasses continuously, we need to prepare another hand ahead of time when one hand is playing, like this. Pay attention to my wrist movement. My wrist goes up before the hand goes back. For this one, we have to remember to change our wrist position when we change fingers. So when the index finger plays the glass, my right hand wrist opens, tilt to the left side slightly, like that. In my return, I will open the wrist opposite direction. It's important to know where to stop the glass before plucking the next note. If my connecting note is a thumb note, 
That's easy. I just you know, put the glass and if I pick it up, if I curl my finger knuckle to play that note. If my connecting note is an octave, I just do the same thing but adding my middle finger. However, if the connecting note is played by the middle finger, normally we will stop the glass one octave higher than that middle finger note. So for example, if I'm playing the middle finger La and I'm playing glass before that, so I'll play glass, I'll play and stop the glass on the Do note one octave higher, then we'll play the La. So. The reason for this is often after I play a middle finger note, it's connected by a higher note played by the thumb. For example, that's why you want to stop your glitz one octave higher than the middle finger note. Now let's talk about a more advanced technique called arpeggio. Arpeggio sounds like this. on the strings first before plucking any of them. For arpeggios, we want to land all fingers on the strings first. For example, La, Do, Mi, La. Then I pluck each string by bending the first knuckle towards the palm. Keep other fingers on the strings. That's very, very important. So I pluck with my ring finger. Keep other fingers on the strings. Then I release. Let me do it a little bit faster. Keep the balance of your hand in the center of your palm. Then practice from slow to faster. Faster. And try with your left hand. I will play Do, Mi, So, Do. Land all fingers first. Ring finger, pluck. Other fingers stay on the strings. Land the same time on the fingers. Then pluck. of a strings to practice arpeggio for right now. Even though there are some common combinations we should know later. But for right now, let's just get the technique right. Remember to land all fingers on the strings before you plug in them. Let's try seven notes arpeggio played by both hands one after another. Left hand will play four notes and right hand plays three notes. So left hand la do mi la and right hand I'll play do mi la on the higher octave. So if I play three notes up here, I will start with middle finger. If I play four notes up here, I will start with the ring finger. Experience. 
experiment with different combinations. Arpeggios can be two notes, three notes, four notes, one hand or both hands. For example, two notes arpeggio simply lend two fingers. Three notes arpeggio, then three fingers, starting with the middle finger, middle index and thumb. Four notes arpeggio, starting with ring finger. Do, mi, so, do. Re, sol, la, re. Mi, la, do, mi. So, do, re, so. La, do, mi, la. Two hands arpeggio, seven notes. Now I'm going to show you how to play tremolo, an advanced technique that produces a long and continuous note. Tremolo is played by fast repetitions of the thumb pick going forward and backwards. First, we want to hold our index finger and a thumb like this. Tip of index finger holding the bottom of the thumb pick where the tape is. And you can see it's kind of like olive shape formed of your index finger and the thumb. And you keep the other fingers just gently touching each other like this. Then you want to land the inside of your thumb pick on the string you're gonna trim on, on inside. Okay, so that's the preparation movement. Then you're gonna raise the wrist slightly to the right, like that. Ah, let's see one more time. Rest, raise the wrist. Let's see one more time. Rest and raise the wrist to the right. And move the wrist to the left. And pluck the first note. And I, then you go back. So after you pluck the first note, you want to rest the pick on the next following string. So it's La. Now I'm going to go back by moving my wrist to the right and pluck the string with the pick. Then I repeat the motion. Left, right, left, right. When you play slowly, you are moving pretty much only the wrist. But once you play faster, you actually have to keep your arm moving with the wrist, just naturally. So don't make your arm still. Uh, just move with your wrist. Think about the motion of saying hi to somebody with your hand like this. So hi, hi, move your... That's how you move the wrist and arm. And on the string. slowly. So I will start with the four each time. One, two, three, four. And I can switch string. One, two, three, Faster. 
it might take weeks or months before you can play tremolo fast and smoothly. So please be patient, practice slowly, then gradually speed up. Another challenge for tremolo is when you switch between strings, how to play them very smoothly. Sometimes it's very useful to coordinate with your breath when you switch strings. Like this, inhale before you tremolo, exhale when you tremolo, and inhale before you switch the string, exhale when you switch the string. To play harmonics, first find the exact middle spot between the mountain and the bridge. I actually use a pencil to mark the spot ahead of time. So for example, this one, this is the middle. And while I plug the string, I will tap the middle spot with my pinky if I wear finger picks on other fingers or index finger if I don't. Either one is okay like this. Play and tap at the same time. And keep your left hand open like that, controlled. If I use index finger, it would look like this. And to align your right hand and the left hand, you can use your breath. So inhale, exhale, then play and tap. All right. We have learned all the basic techniques. It's time to play something. Let's improvise. Let's start with the single notes. We can use the combination of the middle finger and the thumb. Add some vibrato. Then use index finger and the thumb.
have come to the end of our lesson. I hope you have learned something useful today and enjoy playing the guzheng. For further studies, please check out my other instructional videos on more detailed instructions of each individual techniques. You can also get my instructional books that are available on my website. Please keep practicing and thank you for watching.